Hello everyone, welcome to Civil Engineering and Stuff and in today's video lecture we are going to discuss about vehicle damage factor. So in this video we are going to be discussing about what is vehicle damage factor and how it is being used in design of payment. So before we move on to the discussion of this vehicle damage factor, we should know that your vehicle damage factor is also known by equivalent axial load factor or equivalent wheel load factor. So if we are talking about equivalent wheel load factor or equivalent axial load factor or vehicle damage factor, we are talking about the same thing. All right, first thing is this. Now let us discuss what this vehicle damage factor is. Now to understand this vehicle damage factor, let us take a road let us take a road with a thickness t now over this road there will be number of vehicles that will be traveling there will be vehicles uh, with single axial and single wheel on both sides there will be vehicles with single axial dual wheel on both sides there will be tandem vehicles and there will be tridem vehicles that is, there will be, uh, let's say, there will be commercial trucks that will be moving. There will be tandem vehicles that will be moving over this road section. Just for the sake of in example, let us consider these two only. All right. Now, needless to say, your weight of single axial vehicle with a single wheel on both sides will be much lighter than your tandem vehicle right your tandem vehicle will be heavier than your vehicles with single action right but both are commercial vehicles that that are used to carry goods from one place to another all right let's say the weight of this vehicle is p1 and the weight of vehicle this vehicle is p2 and definitely we know p1 is greater than p2 all right now you know that if we compare the number of repetitions that are going to take for a vehicle to move so that now let us consider that a p1 vehicle takes n1 number of repetitions to achieve this road a complete failure that is this p1 vehicle this vehicle with weight p1 will move n1 number of times over this assumed road section and after n1 number of repetitions this payment will achieve failure in a similar fashion your vehicles with weight p2 your vehicle with weight p2 will move n2 number of times right your vehicles with weight p2 will move will move n2 number of times to achieve the way achieve the payment to a complete failure all right so your p1 weighing vehicle will take n1 number of repetitions to achieve this payment a complete failure likewise your vehicle weighing p2 will take n2 number of repetition to make this payment a complete failure and unfit for use if this is the case if this is the case then your p1 n1 will be equals to p2 n2 okay your p1 n1 will be equals to p2 n2 likewise let's say there is another vehicle with weight p3 and that vehicle takes n3 number of repetitions then p1 n1 will be equal to p2 n2 will be equal to p3 n3 all right n3 being the number of repetitions taken by the vehicle weighing p3 to achieve our road a complete failure all right so you see different vehicles will take different number of repetitions to make a specific road or to achieve a specific road a complete failure Correct, and it's not like at one point at a 
uh, one point of time only one single type of vehicle will be traveling at same point of time and um, these different type of vehicles will be traveling simultaneously and there will be n number of same type of vehicles right so the designers the payment designers faced this problem like they wanted to find out an equivalency factor so that a specific vehicle can be converted into a specific unit so to do that to understand this the american association of state highway officials that is aasho conducted a very detailed investigation and in their detailed investigation they they took a stretch of road and over that road they allowed a movement of vehicles of various weight weight ranging from 5000 kg to 12 sorry 5000 pounds to 12000 pounds that is 5000 6000 7000 8000 9000 10000 11000 and 12000 pounds and each of these weighing head weighing vehicles did n number of times of repetitions and based on their repetition they they recorded the damage that is being caused and through that they took a standard axial load and derived a equivalent wheel load factor or a vehicle damage factor and based upon their experiment they said that with respect to a standard axial load right with respect to a standard axial load or a standard or a standard wheel load with respect to a standard axial load or a standard wheel load the given vehicle the given vehicle or any vehicle with let's say weight p1 if the standard wheel load is taking let's say consider to be p then a vehicle with load p1 will follow a fourth power law that is p1 by p to the power 4 all right so that was the damaging effect that will be caused by a vehicle a type of vehicle of weight p1 with respect to the standard wheel load okay and that is what they defined as the vehicle damage factor or equivalent wheel load factor or equivalent axial load factor correct so to define the vehicle damage factor vehicle damage factor is nothing but a multiplier to convert the given number of commercial vehicle having different axial configuration and different axial weight into an equivalent number of standard axial load and as per irc 37 2018 irc 37 2018 the vehicle damage factors conversion units are as follows so for a single axial with single wheel load on either side standard load is 65 and with respect to that a single axial with single wheel load may be carrying different amount of load depending upon the type of loading that it may carry so whatever be the load that load we have to take divided by 65 to the power 4 for single axial with dual wheel on either side standard load is taken as 80 kN so once we are doing a traffic survey a vehicle with single axial with dual wheel on either side it may be carrying any amount of weight depending upon the size of load that it may be carrying right it may be overloaded in fact right so whatever the load that you measure during the traffic survey that load you have to take here and have to divide by 80 to the power 4 and you have to keep adding the uh, different type of same category vehicles then similarly for tandem axial with dual wheel on either side the standard load is 148 kN uh, so axial load in kN divided by 148 to the power 4 for tandem axial with dual wheel on either side the standard load is taken as 224 kN and whatever weight of the vehicle that is being recorded during the traffic survey is taken here to the power 4 okay so now you see like each vehicle may be carrying any number of each category of vehicles once you do once you are doing a traffic survey you are sitting by the side of the road and you are recording like you are you are having a, a weighing sensor and whatever vehicle that is single axial with single wheel load 
is coming over your sensor, it gives you a weight, let's say P1. So P1 divided by 65 to the power 4. And then another vehicle will come. It will be weighing, let's say P2. P2 divided by 65 to the power 4. Right. And like this, you have to find out a vehicle damage factor for each categories of vehicle that you encounter during the traffic circuit. IRC 37 again specifies the uh, overall traffic uh, minimum sample size of the axial load survey. So for commercial traffic volume less than 3000, the minimum percentage of commercial vehicles to be surveyed should be 20%. For 3000 to 6000, it is 15% subjected to a minimum of 600 community vehicles per day. For greater than 6000, it will be 10% subjected to minimum of 9000 community vehicles per day. Okay, so this is how what the application of vehicle damage factor is. Vehicle damage factor is used to convert daily traffic, daily traffic count of each category into one into a standard axial load. And it indicates the possible damage by V load with respect to the standard axial load. Okay, so uh, I tried to through this video I tried to explain this VDF in the most simplest terms as possible. Okay, and I hope um, uh, through this video, this vehicle damage factor, also called as equivalent edge load factor or equivalent wheel load factor, this concept is clear to you. Right. Again, if you have any doubt, you can always ask in the comment section. Please share your views in the comment section. Like if there is any doubt or any suggestion that you want to give, like the video if you find this video useful and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day.